Hey, Sean here again, P2R. Today I wanted to do another tech video, talk to you guys a little bit about the cylinder heads for the J series. Um, among the J, a lot of people don't realize, but we have three generations of cylinder heads. Um, today episode, we're gonna talk about the exhaust side of things. The exhaust side conversation, we're gonna call them by generation. So this is the first generation exhaust, second generation exhaust, and we got the third generation exhaust here. So you can see when Honda first developed the engine, it's your traditional three port exhaust like pretty much any engine you know, you got a header, typical header design, like you see on this engine we have here. That's a J35A4 we just finished up for a customer. That's gonna go on an S2000 and a road course. It's gonna be a really nice setup there. We're running a set of our CNC cylinder heads with a Ferrera spring package and aluminum rockers, some other goodies. So back to the heads. After some time and you have emissions, you know, the manufacturer's got a lot to deal with when it comes to that. They shifted to a, what we call a monoport where the exhaust manifold is technically casted into the cylinder head. And this is where we came to Gen 2 here. As time continued to move on, they've kind of tweaked the power curve a little bit. They're trying to make the car a little bit more torquey, make the car feel um, more aggressive for driving in and out of traffic, not necessarily for just peak horsepower, uh, something that we're typically after in, in racing, but um, they got the exhaust port a little more refined and they actually made it a little smaller. It gives a little bit of a lower RPM power curve well, this one gives you a little bit more of a higher RPM power curve. This one is just, um, you know, to me, this is the best overall in terms of exhaust port for making big power. To be honest, in most people's goals, I tell people to stick with a generation head that came in their car because when we port the cylinder heads, we're able to get a lot of flow out of all three designs. We can get you pretty much to your goals no matter which head you go with. So sometimes it's best to just stick with the head that comes in the vehicle you're working on. And that's assuming we're talking about like an Acura TL, a Honda Accord, you know, Honda Pilot, something that comes with the actual J-Series engine in it. If it's a swap Civic um, or, you know, any sort of swap, I mean, you can pretty much pick and choose which one you want to go with. We can help you um, determine which one's the best for your setup as well. So in this first generation head, the three port, this comes typically in, if they're talking about the 3.2 liters, you got the J32A1, J32A2, 3.5 liters. There's a couple more engine codes. You got the J35, a3, J35, A4, and um, there's a couple more in there. This one never came with the 3.7 liter. You just came three liter, 3.2 with 3.5. When we shift over to this style head or this exhaust port, this uh, typically you have the J30 for the three liters. You got the J30, A4, and the J30, A5. Then you come to 3.2 liters. The only J3.2 that I believe is the J32, A3. Um, then of course you have 3.5 liters and there's a lot of engine codes in there, probably too many to write off, but I know you've got the 35A6 and the 35A8. There's also the J37A1 comes with this exhaust port, but only the first generation of the J37. So this head, you can come pretty much from three liter all the way to 3.7. And then when we come to our final exhaust port here, the, this is the, this one comes in a, a, way too many J35 engine codes you could think of. So this head only comes in either a 3.5 or a 3.7. This head never came on a three liter or a 3.2, at least not here in America. Um, since the J-Series is so widely used all over the world, I wouldn't be surprised if it was uh, on a 3.2 somewhere, but here that only comes in 3.5 or 3.7. Um, so all three of these heads have been CNC ported. So these are just fresh off the machine. We didn't, um, clean them up, deburr them, anything like that yet. I just wanted to show you in the raw state how the exhaust port looks on all three designs. And um, what I wanted to do quickly here is I wanted to focus a little bit on the Gen 2 exhaust port for a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the Gen 1 aside. And I'm gonna go ahead and set the Gen 3 aside. And I'm gonna bring, right here, I'm gonna bring a stock Gen 2 head because that's what I have here right now. All of our other heads that we have on the shelf are already CNC ported. And um, pretty much we have the heads ported already. So when somebody orders a head, it's not long before we basically do valve job, um, you know, whatever processes you want. If you want a Super Tech spring package or Ferrera spring package, uh, we press the, the, the bronze guides. And at that point, we do the valve job, we mill the heads, we get them cleaned up, ready for assembly, and we can get you a set of heads really quickly. So let me get a stock head here on the table, just so you can compare the exhaust port on this versus the stock one, because a lot of people don't realize how much we were able, actually able to open up the exhaust on this head. 
So the first thing you can see, pretty much right at the flange surface, we were able to open this up quite a bit. And when you actually look down into the cylinder head, you can just see how thick and how much meat is still left on there. We're able to divide the air and to get a lot of extra flow coming out of this. Um, and that's why we say basically whichever head design you go with, we're able to get a lot of flow out of it. Um, with this, we didn't go too big. We've actually, as you've seen in the past, we've cut the heads open. We see how much material we have. So we know we're not breaking through and into the water jackets because there is water right below this exhaust port. So we have to be very careful of how much we remove from the head. So there is a limitation of it. Plus we also want to um, make sure that we're keeping a strong power curve. We don't want to just open up the port and give you a flat car that only makes peak horsepower. So with this, I mean, you can see how much smaller it is compared to this but we were able to get a really strong power curve, also increase your peak horsepower. So you don't actually not, these engines typically, depending on a 3.2, 3.5, you can see your peak horsepower around like 5,000 and something RPMs. We're able to get your peak horsepower a little bit higher into the 6,000 area. And that's assuming you're still on the stock cams and everything. As always, if you enjoy our J-Series content, please like, please subscribe, uh, and I'll see you guys again soon.